were the industrialists of the late 1800s robber barons or captains of industry? In plain folks' turn, were they motherfuckers who were stealing from the people and exploiting their workers? Or were they big business leaders who was putting the country on and creating jobs for folk and, and making the country better? I'll give you all the facts. And you make your own damn decision. After this segment of Realist History on the realest, most entertaining show in the game, put it on something. I am your homeboy first. And I told y'all I am committed to getting the truth out here. Because clearly, clearly, there are a lot of people in our country that need it. But before I get to that, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Uh, turn on those notifications. Uh, hit that like button. Hit that share button. Put anybody who needs real fucking history, put them on it. Okay? Real, unfiltered, in a way they can understand it. Put them on it. You feel me? Uh, follow me across all social media. Uh, contribute via Cash App, PayPal, however you choose. Okay. As I continue to make my company, IG Entertainment, the one stop shop for all things black culture. Now, if you missed last week's uh, segment of Realist History, make sure you go back and watch that. I did an introduction uh, to the industrial age. Okay. Uh, and I know I told y'all that I like to start with a re review question, but I'm going to, that's how I do when uh, I used to be in the classroom. I'm going to tweak that slightly for this. Okay. And I'll just do once we're done with this whole uh, chapter, so to speak, or this whole topic, uh, we'll just do a, a segment that we only do re review questions. Okay. So I'll have a chance to reteach and uh, maybe let some people who didn't, catch all the segments catch up and you know just give y'all a chance to quiz yourselves okay you know some motherfuckers like that kind of shit all right so we'll do it like that instead and we'll just hop straight into this new lesson so today we're basically talking about uh the rich motherfuckers at that time the industrialists the folks who were getting to the money okay uh we want to look at them and and what they did how they did what they did and uh, the impact that they had at that time, okay? And I want to try to answer that question when we're done. Do you think they were good or bad? If you thought they were good, then you'll probably consider them a captain of industry. If you thought they were bad, you'll think they are a robber baron. Let's not waste no time. Let's go ahead and get straight into it, all right? Our objectives. I right, want to be able to analyze different methods that businesses use to increase their profits. Uh, two, we want to describe the public debate over the impact of big business. And lastly, we want to explain how the government took steps to block abuses of corporate power. Mm, okay, we'll get into that. Let's look at some of the vocab for this week. And I'm going to take this banner down just so y'all can see everything down there. All right. So corporation is a key term we'll deal with. Corporation is a form of group ownership in which a number of people share the ownership of a business okay so just think about it like this uh take uh my company ig entertainment i solely own this company along with my brother timothy jake okay now if we were to be become a corporation we would uh offer stock in our company and then you can buy a share of our company and we would use that money that we're gaining through uh uh People purchasing stock will use that money to expand the operation and shit like that. Okay, so that, that's corporation. Corporations, y'all know, do big shit. We, we talking about Nike. We talking about Apple. We talking about Walmart. All that kind of shit. Big business. All right. Uh, next one, monopoly, complete control of a product or service. Okay, I think I have a monopoly on this real shit. You feel me? I think, hey, hell, I got that on lock. You understand when you when you talk about real shit on the internet, you're coming to me. So I have a monopoly. You feel me? Or uh Google. I would say Google has a monopoly when it comes to the search engine game. When you think about searching for something online, you go on to Google. So they pretty much got a modern day monopoly. 
Now, by the time I'm done with this section, you may wonder how is that possible, but we'll talk more about that throughout the course, okay? Um, cartel. Cartel, y'all yeah, have heard that. Uh, a lot of these, uh, you may watch a street show or some shit like that. You might might watch a show like uh, 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 Narcos or something, and you hear something about cartel. Well, in the business world, you see cartels as well, okay? A cartel is an arrangement in which businesses making the same product agree to limit production to keep prices high. Now, cartel that we'll talk about much later on is OPEC, okay? The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Those motherfuckers play a large role in what your gas prices are, okay? But we'll talk about them later but it's a it's basically a collection of countries who do exactly what that definition just said they 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 work together to limit production and raise prices or they might increase production and lower prices okay but cartel john d rockefeller the richest motherfucker in the history of this country if you adjust it for inflation okay stupid stanky rich how to get rich oil game okay as they define it here, an oil tycoon who made deals with railroads to increase his profits. But they ain't the only shit he did. That motherfucker did a whole lot of stuff. He, he was very ruthless in the business world. All right? And that's how he became the richest motherfucker in the history of our country. And his money is still running around amongst the Rockefeller family. All right. Next key term we'll see, horizontal integration. A system of consolidating many firms in the same business to lower production costs. That's one of the strategies Rockefeller also used. Okay, we'll talk about, about that more later on. Trust, a situation in which companies assign their stock to a board of trustees who combine them into a new organization. Now, for our purposes, uh, high school history, high school U.S. history type shit, basic U.S. history type shit, we're just going to look at a trust like a monopoly i'm not gonna get all into the and be tedious with this shit okay so when we think about trust just think about a monopoly and i already told y'all monopoly is a business has com complete or nearly complete control over a particular uh uh industry okay andrew carnegie or you might hear some historians say carnegie all right i don't give a fuck we just gonna say Car carnegie right now a steel tycoon who used vertical integration to increase his power that motherfucker is one of the the richest folks in the history of our country as well. Him and Rockefeller used to be tip for tat around that time. But think about Rockefeller, think about the oil game, think about Andrew Carnegie, think about the steel game, okay? Uh, vertical integration. The practice of gaining control of many different businesses that make up all phases of a product's development. Rockefeller did this strategy as well. Carnegie used this strategy as well. The That's how these boys got so stupid, stinking rich. Okay, they had to pay nobody. God damn it, they were controlling every aspect of their product's development. We'll talk more about that. Okay. A uh, few more key terms. Social Darwinism. It's a must-know term, y'all, for y'all to truly understand what the fuck is going on in our country. Social Darwinism. An application of Charles Darwin's work, which held that wealth was a measure of one's inherent value and those who had it were the most fit. I'm going to break that shit down for y'all. Y'all going to truly understand what that shit talking about. Some deep shit. And I'm telling you, it's a lot of people in our country who still believe that shit. Okay? The ICC, the Interstate Commerce Commission, a government body set up to oversee railroad operations, but in modern society, they oversee much more than that. OK, and the Sherman Antitrust Act, a bill passed in 1890, which outlawed any trust that operated in restraint of trade or commerce among the several states. So y'all see, basically, y'all, this law was put in place to go against, you see, anti, think against, to go against trust or go against monopolies. They didn't do a good job of that. OK, we'll talk about that. A little bit more. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right. So our overarching question is: How did big business shape the American economy in the late 1800s and early 1900s? All right. 
The growth of big business in the late 1800s changed American society. The rise of business empires turned the United States into an economically powerful nation. Okay, again, late 1800s, that's when America got really stupid, stanky rich as a country. Okay, all right, and think about that now. A little foreshadowing for you. Think about what Tupac said back in the day. I mean, he said, God told me don't go to war until I got my money right. Well, I got my money right, and I want war. So think about what's coming down the line that we talking about his money getting right. Just keep that in the back of your head. Let's go. All right, industrialization changed how businesses were run. All right, business leaders combined funds and resources. Investors formed corporations that protected them from losing more than their original investment. Okay, a corporation could operate in different regions. So again, like I was saying, when you start a company, it might just be family owned, family run. Okay, and and you're going hard. You might even got some business loans and everything like that. You got a a location here. You might got another location across town. Okay, but that can't compare to if you open your business up or quote unquote go public and offer others the opportunity to invest in your comp company as long as you keep the most shares and steal your shit okay so when you get this extra capital in and you do like they say you combine these funds you combine these resources shit now you can do some things you can operate not only in your locale here you can do some things in different regions okay you can do some things in different markets you can get to some more money all right so we saw shit like that happening uh, with greater frequency in the late 1800s in the United States. Corporations work to maximize profits by paying workers low wages, paying lower prices for raw materials, and supporting research labs. Okay, now uh, this little graphic right here is talking about Standard Oil. And that was the name of John D. Rockefeller's company. Okay, so if y'all see some, you ever watching some, uh, listening to some, reading some, and it says something about Standard Oil, they're talking about John D. Rockefeller. But again, look at these uh, uh, bullet points, especially that first one. Corporations work to maximize profits by paying workers low wages. That is, that has always been a key feature of capitalism. Keeping those costs low so those profits can be high. And one of the main costs you try to keep low is paying your workers. And that was especially true at this time. Uh, again, I'm doing 1877 to the present. So, because we know that shit was true during slavery. Motherfuckers didn't want to pay uh, at all. But don't get me started there. If you want that early American history shit, make sure you go look that up. All right. But even after slavery, steel companies been trying to figure out a way how do I keep my the, 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 the wages of my workers low, okay? And at this time, there, were, there weren't any minimum wage laws like that at a federal level. So shit, <laughs> you shout as a worker. Now we gonna see how that changed. If you, you know, keep watching the realist history segments that I put out, you'll see how over time how we go from no minimum wage to <laughs> we got one today, but that motherfucker needs to be raised in my opinion. But you see, that has always been a, a feature. Okay. Also, I want to look at this. You see how it says supporting research labs. I want youngins out there to think about the fact that, hey, bro, maybe you're not the industrialist, but maybe you can goddamn partner with the industrialist. Maybe you can partner with an entrepreneur, the hustler. You know, somebody, maybe you're a scientist and, and, and you know how to come up with some shit, and, but they know how to hustle it. But well, goddamn it, you can get money by doing that. There's so many opportunities out here for our youngins to make money that they don't think about. 
uh, in part because they just don't know some of these opportunities exist. Okay, so let's do a better job as the OGs and putting them on game when it comes to that. Okay, somebody who's good in biology and chemistry um, and engineering, like they're good at math, so they might have an engineering mind. Somebody who's good at some of these things, they could go on to make great money working for one of these companies and, and doing research for them or developing new products or making their products better. Okay. Get our kids thinking outside the box about some of these goddamn jobs that are available to them. All right, let's go. All right, corporations use strategies to eliminate competition and decrease costs. All right, there's some cutthroat shit now. Pay attention. Monopolies and cartels. Competitors were forced out of business. All right, horizontal integration and vertical integration. Better control of production and costs reduced let's focus on each one of these terms all right now i told you about monopolies first uh and i want it as i told you on the first lesson now i'm what you get when you mix higher learning with hood shit i think you kind of see that all right so i'm gonna use some hood shit to explain this when i think of monopolies i think about shit get down or lay down Now, what I think about, like, yo, I'm going to run your fucking company out of business. You need to fucking combine with me or else it's a wrap. Like, we can that horizontal integration goes with that. Because horizontal integration is uh, when companies that make the same shit combine. Okay? So it would be like Nike and Adidas combining. Imagine that shit. Imagine if Nike would be like, man, I'm tired of you motherfuckers. Let's go ahead and buy them out. Now, Nike is the more powerful brand. So they made a power move like that. Maybe it'll work. Maybe they go to Adidas and be like, look, if you combine with us a week through our advertising, through our uh, maybe through us lowering prices, lowering prices. Somehow we're going to get at your ass in a way that you ain't going to be able to keep up with us and we're going to run your ass into the dirt. Now, to avoid that, you can just combine with us. And let's say they do the same shit to Under Armour. If they combine with them, oh, and let's say, let's throw Reebok in there too. I think Reebok trying to have a comeback shit. Let's say they get them. They pretty much got shit sold up and they got a monopoly. Okay? Get down, lay down. Either your company going to combine with mine or I'm going to run your shit in the dirt and I'm going to win and take over this industry anyway. Horizontal integration to create a monopoly. Let's do uh, cartels, okay? Then we talked about cartels when numerous companies work together. Okay, numerous companies working together um, to control prices. Have you ever seen The Wire? Oh, if you haven't seen The Wire, y'all, you got to watch this shit. I don't know where you can find it on these stream. Maybe it's on HB, uh, HBO. Maybe I, I own the shit. I bought them all. Okay, I bought the whole fucking series, but uh. They have an example of a cartel on there. They do. Okay. And you'll see the lead dope boy. Shit. They even had meetings and shit. And he holding court and he telling them, you know, how much we going to charge for this, this, that, and the third. That's on some cartel shit. Because they are working together. They, they have these were individual clicks. But they were working together, though. Okay? Just like I said about OPEC. Again, we're going to talk about them a long way off. But I want y'all to know about them because so many folk just look at gas prices and say, oh, the president. I was guilty of it before I got educated. I remember one of my songs uh, during the Bush administration. I'm up there talking about 
Bush got the gas so high it's a fool or uh, something. Uh, now, Bush was tied in with them oil execs and shit like that. So that, that bar could have stood, you know what I'm talking about? But ultimately, there are other forces that go into a price uh to the price of gas as well you feel me and opec is one of those forces because those countries uh mainly out of the middle east but they got some other countries in there as well them motherfuckers click up and they decide okay shit bro we need the oil prices to go well what we're gonna do they say well let me, let's limit production and y'all know basic hustling when supply goes down price goes up and then you be looking at your gas pump, cussing and fussing and shit. And you don't, you ain't pay attention to the news and see what OPEC ass did. That's why it's so important for us to to, to not be dependent on foreign oil, which is something that I want to say going all the way back to the Obama administration. We've been doing a much better job at that because they've been using some kind of shit called fracking. Uh, now. Those of y'all real ones out there that's in the science world, you may be familiar with oil, uh, oil drilling and shit like that. Y'all know more about that fracking shit than I do. I just know it, it seems like instead of just going down for oil, it, it's allowed us to go side to side in the ground as well and get more of it. I think that's what it is. Y'all might know better than I do as well. But whatever the case is, us not being dependent on that shit will help us not be susceptible to the oil cartels of the world okay oh but let's do vertical integration as well vertical integration like i said before it's when you control every aspect or damn near every aspect of your products development so in an easy to understand way uh think about tyler perry okay tyler perry is so rich he's a billionaire because that man really gets to keep most of the money. Think about going all the way back to his plays, all up into now. Who been writing all his shit? Who been directing all his shit? Come on now, who producing it? Now, they got Tyler Perry Studios out there on all that land. Where is he filming this shit? Who's usually the star in his shit? Come on now. That's vertical integration. He is controlling his product's development. So at the end of the day, who getting the check, baby? Him. See, that's the kind of shit that these guys were doing back then. So you take a motherfucker like John D. Rockefeller in the oil game. So he won't, gotta have oil feel, gotta have somewhere to get the oil, okay? You got that. You gotta have a way to transport the oil, okay? You, can, you gotta get it from the field to your refineries, your factories where you gonna, you know, turn the oil into various products. Oh, railroads and pipelines. He got that. Then, like I just said, he got the oil refineries. Okay. Then you have somewhere to sell the oil to the consumer. Motherfucker had all that shit. Therefore, he gets to keep all the money. And with more money, he has more power and more leverage. And, and these smaller motherfuckers can't compete. So there you go again to horizontal integration where he combines with companies that make the same product because they just can't compete. So they just get swallowed up by his ass. Y'all see why that man was so rich now? Come on, let's go. Speaking of, here are some of those tycoons of the late 1800s again. John D. Rockefeller oil gang. Andrew Carnegie, steel gang. And then here's a, a, a new guy that I haven't talked to y'all about yet. Cornelius Vanderbilt. The railroad hustle. Okay. And another guy that I, I'll just throw in there is JP Morgan for banking. Okay. Uh, and I'll show y'all pictures of all of them at the end. So let's look at this. Let's get to this question because I'm interested in what y'all think. Were the tycoons, quote unquote, robber barons who swindled the poor and drove small businesses under? 
meaning like where they motherfuckers who were tricking poor people and you know what I'm saying fucking over small businesses hmm. or were they captains of industry who served the nation and made prices of goods cheaper which take a look at this picture now now again if you're driving don't look at this motherfucker and uh if you are uh working you know what I'm saying just keep doing your thing I don't want you to get no strike against it. all right but take a look at this if you can see it and I want you to tell me, based on what you see, if you think whoever made this uh, cartoon, whoever the cartoonist was, do they think uh, these rich guys, these tycoons, these big business folk, were they robber barons or captains of industry? Let me try to make that bigger for you. Check that out. Okay, take a good look at it now. And if you can't see it, okay, you got Uncle Sam in the middle, okay? And you got these two heavyset cats with top hats on. And if you pay close attention here, it looks like this guy here is going in Uncle Sam's uh, pocket and stealing something. And there's other cat over here going in this pocket, okay? So, has to be that this cartoonist thought that the industrialists of that time were bad and therefore robber barons. Here's another one, okay? It says, big business is bad for small business? That's with a question mark, of course. The next slide is gonna say, or, or is big business good for the nation? Now, take a look at this one, this uh, political cartoon. And let's try this one, okay? If you wanna pause it right here and look at it, analyze that motherfucker for yourself, you know, test your brain, y'all. Test your brain. All right, so what you have is a picture of, I guess, a dragon or some kind of monster or something. And it has the word Monopoly written on there. Remember what I told you Monopoly was now? This is uh, some kind of business that controls or damn near controls an entire industry. And what it looks like the monster is doing is swallowing up the United States of America. Okay, and then off in the sky, you see the public eye watching this as this occurred. So again, it looks like this cartoonist was against these monopolists, these big business motherfuckers as well. Okay, uh, but everybody didn't feel that way, y'all. Everybody didn't feel that way because on the flip side, you had those who argued that no, nah, they're good. Rockefeller is good for the country. Carnegie is good for the country. Uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt, J.P. Morgan, they're good for the country because they provide jobs. There were some who said, no, nah, man, them, them dudes good with me because they gave me a job, dog. Without Mr. Rockefeller, I wouldn't have no job, dog. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, others may have said, look at what they've done for our country. We had all this new shit. All right? it, like I said, it allows for product innovation. So they're looking at all the new gadgets they got. In America, and they might be happy about that. And they they say that's because of the rich industrialists, or look at the money they're giving away. Uh, because these folks financially uh, supported universities, libraries, and museums. Hey, I took my mom to visit her beloved uh, Tuskegee University. You know, my mom graduated from Jack State, but she started at Tuskegee. Okay, and uh, we went on campus at Tuskegee, and you can see. Some of the buildings named after some of the kids I'm talking to you about. I think there was a building named after Carnegie. Or it might have been Rockefeller, or maybe both. I can't remember. But I know at least one of the motherfuckers that giving some money down there and had some shit named after them. I guess Booker T. Washington was able to get some money up out of them dudes. All right. So some people thought these cats were good because of the money that they were throwing around. Okay. You know, you got Carnegie Hall in New York. You know what I'm talking about? Cornelius Vanderbilt has a college named after him. It, you know, y'all have heard of Vanderbilt in Tennessee. You feel me? Uh, you got to make up your mind on these things. But let's talk about this social Darwinism, y'all, because I told y'all this is an idea that still persists in our country. It says, survival of the fittest. Charles Darwin's idea of evolution of species. Okay, and y'all know that from science, okay, the, 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 the theory that 
uh, things evolve over time. They adapt to their environment. Those that adapt, they live and thrive. Those that don't adapt, they die off. Okay. Of course, he was talking about some birds, some finches, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. On the Galapagos Islands and shit. And he noticed that the, the, the bir birds that had uh, the correct beaks to, to be able to open the seas, they lived. And those that didn't, they died off. Okay. So, some folks took that idea of adapt or die, survival of the fist, and applied it to American capitalism. And that led to the idea of social Darwinism. Okay. This is the belief that wealth was a measure of a person's value. And, and those who had wealth were the most fit. See, the thought was, if you were getting to some money, you were smarter, you worked harder, you got up early, you stayed up late, and you deserve your massive wealth if you had it. And if you didn't have it, you shout, that's on you. You just ain't fit. And you deserve your poverty. You still got a lot of folks who feel that way now. Okay? You better get on your shit. You better get on your shit. We show up and see it. With Trump getting back up in that bitch and we got the Republican Party running shit. Like, you mostly find motherfuckers who think like that on the conservative side of things. So with these social welfare programs and shit like that, like, like Medicaid, government program to help low-income people go to the doctor, Medicare, to help the elderly go to the doctor, Social Security, monthly pension for, for the elderly. Some of these folks say, man, fuck all that. Survival of the fittest out here, dog. Dog eat dog out here. Either you got it or you don't. Social Darwinism. Social Darwinists believed government should stay out of private business and thought it was wrong to use public funds to assist the poor. Okay, that's more conservative thinking. All right, you literally hear people say this kind of shit. They, they, they think the government is too big. They think all these regulations, we need to get that shit out of the way. All these damn rules, that, that these rules are... are uh, uh, um, Stopping business from being innovative and growing, get them out the way, and and all using taxpayer dollars uh, to assist the poor. You just throwing money at the poor. The poor need to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. On the other side is this: it says Americans who worried about the methods of industrialists called for federal regulation of business practices. So, it, for example, you heard Kamala Harris saying she was going to go after the price gougers. Really, what she was saying, she was going to regulate those motherfuckers. So here, from the late 1800s to now, you see this classic argument between conservatives and liberals or progressives, whatever you want to call them. Uh, one side saying we need less regulation. Other side saying we need more regulation. One side saying just trust the businesses. We know what is best for America. The other side saying... Other side saying, uh, we can't trust you motherfuckers because y'all going to try to, you know, do some bad shit. All right. One side saying, man, the poor need to help themselves. You're not going to take my money to help them motherfuckers. The other side saying, no, as a society, we have a uh, obligation to help those who can't help themselves. And as an American, you got to figure out what the fuck you believe in and vote accordingly vote accordingly let's go the icc and the sherman antitrust act began a trend toward government limits on corporate power let's start with the icc uh i told you previously icc stands for interstate commerce commission okay they oversaw railroad operations but now for all my truck drivers out there y'all deal with the icc today and shit like that uh if you're doing business between states you, you gotta deal with the goddamn I, icc but at that time i told y'all how railroads changed the game okay we talked about that in the last lesson and so 
they oversaw that. So it was like the first time you had a government agency that was going to regulate something like that. Okay. So this was historic. You feel me? Historic. Let's look at the Sherman Antitrust Act, uh, passed by the Senate in 1890, and it outlawed trust that restrained trade among several states. So this was like the first law that you uh, saw that tried to regulate those monopolies we were talking about. Again, to understand this term, think anti, think against. We see trust, just think monopolies. Okay, we're going to get deep down into the all that. Just think monopolies. So this law tried to regulate monopolies. I keep using the word tried. Because obviously, based on what I just taught y'all, they didn't do a good job. With it. Rockefeller still run around. Shit. Like he ain't had no shackles on him at all. Carnegie doing the same thing. All them boys just getting to some money. God damn it. Just, just getting it. Actually, these motherfuckers use the Sherman Antitrust Act to go after their workers, like to go after labor unions to a large extent. But this law is still historic because it represented the first time that the government tried to regulate these big businesses like that for real, for real. Okay? But there you have it. There you have it. But now, before we get done, before we get done, I do want to show y'all some pictures. I like showing pictures. I want to show y'all some pictures. Let's look at some pictures. Let's look at y'all like to let you put a face with a name. Can we do that? Let's put a face with a name. All right. And look at some of these industrialists so you can say you've seen these motherfuckers. All right. That cat right there is John D. Rockefeller. I told y'all he was. A monopolist in the oil game, okay? Oil game. That is Andrew Carnegie. Told y'all he was a monopolist in the steel game, okay? This dude right here is J.P. Morgan. He had the banking industry on lock, okay? If you study the late 1800s, these motherfuckers talking about this man was able to stop a depression by his damn self. Stupid rich, y'all. Y'all have seen his money still running around. Can y'all see his company? Y'all have seen some of this shit say J.P. Morgan. You seen the commercials? They come back to this dude right here. Okay? And the, and the J.P. is for John Pierpont. Sound like money, don't it? And this is Cornelius Vanderbilt. I had the railroad game on lock. Uh, told you about the college that's named the university that's named after him. Hell, his money still running around as well. Anderson Cooper, you know, from CNN is somehow kin to him. You know what I'm talking about? So his money still running around as well. Okay, but some of these modern industrialists, some would say that they're monopolists as well. What about Bill Gates, Microsoft? about musk the current richest person on earth and trump's lap dog i know tesla spacex starlink about jeff bezos amazon you might have given him some money today huh what about zuckerberg facebook you know a lot of folks don't understand how this motherfucker is rich they don't you know, because you don't pay to get on Facebook, but they don't be realizing that this motherfucker has all that data on you. He has all that information about you, and he sells that information to people like me, business people. Like, when I put out a new song and I promote my song, I do this shit on Facebook because he knows all this shit. He knows what you like. You feel me? So I know your age. I know what music you like what movies you like, all that kind of shit. And I type that kind of shit in and he directs my songs to people that I think will like my shit based on what I typed in. That's why this man is rich. Facebook ads. Y'all know who this is? Hopefully my OGs know who this is, but some of the youngest probably know this. He be kind of quiet with this money. Warren Buffett. 
the god hey man the wizard of wall street or something like that i don't know berkshire hathaway that's how he got his money investment that motherfucker, he know that stock shit. okay but i got some other ones in this folder as well i got folk in here like uh we'll talk about henry ford later on when we get to the 1920s all right if y'all never seen Ford, you may have driven the Ford or rode in the Ford, but maybe you've never seen that motherfucker. That's him right there, Henry Ford. Uh, of course, his money's still running around. Oprah, just like a lot of folks don't understand how Zuckerberg is rich, they don't understand how she's so stupid rich. Again, think about her show. You know what I'm saying? Think about who was watching her show for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? She was getting shit, middle age married white women middle class so if you're a hustler your business and you selling something that, that those people like like makeup you know what i'm saying you're gonna pay top dollar to advertise doing oprah show that's why she's a billionaire but she's not the richest black person She's nowhere near the richest American. She ain't in the top 100 richest Americans. Now, when I tell young people that they shocked like a motherfucker, but y'all see momentarily. Some of these other folk in here, I got Ray Kroc, just the dude who basically stole McDonald's and turned that shit into what it is. Uh, dope ass movie about that shit on, uh, well, it used to be on Netflix. I don't know. It's called The Founder. Hopefully, y'all can find that. And this is Sam Walton. Y'all know his money's still running around. Some of his kids just gave money to Trump. Okay. But Sam's Club, that's him. And, of course, Walmart is him. All right. Before we go, I got a little assignment for y'all. Give y'all a little homework, okay? I want y'all to, you know, look up the Forbes 400 Richest Americans. Look that up for me, okay? I want y'all to pay attention to several things. One, I want you to pay attention to uh, the industries that you see where people are getting the most money. Pay attention to those industries, okay? And I want you to kind of put your children on game, okay? So they'll know where the money is. That's one. Two, I want you to pay attention to the race and the gender that you predominantly see on there, okay? Three, I want you to uh, look for your fave black people. Oprah, look for Michael Jordan, look for Jay-Z. See, you know, where they are or aren't okay find the richest black person in america okay and see what they did to get that money all right these are all things i want you to pay attention to as you peruse the forbes 400 richest americans okay and i love to see uh what you find out you know tomorrow you can connect with me on one of my socials, follow me across all social. I'm gonna try to get on Blue Sky and spill uh soon. Okay. But I got comments turned off on these realist history segments because I don't want any Russian bots fucking with y'all and giving y'all misinformation. I don't want any uh MAGA motherfuckers giving y'all misinformation, anything like that. It ain't for me. I don't watch I don't read any goddamn comments on YouTube anyway, but I don't want uh my viewers. To be bombarded with fuck shit uh on these type of videos so if you want to connect with me about uh the lesson you know hit me up on one of my socials or something like that and i can help you work through anything that you might not have understood or something like that but i have pledged to give you the facts and facts only i give my opinion on on this platform about those facts okay but what you see on my slides, hell, historians wrote that shit. And I pledge that to you, that that's what I'm going to deliver. You feel me? Because I got to do something to fight back against the fuck shit that's going on 
in our nation. But before we close out, let's take a look at uh, the words. As I told y'all in lesson one, focus on the words, okay? If we can learn more words and un have a better understanding of words and the meaning of these shits and how this shit really affect our, uh, affects our lives, I think we're going to be better off and I think you're going to be able to help your children uh, in a better fashion, okay? You can't help them if you don't first help yourself. All right, so during this lesson, we talked about corporations, okay, these big businesses in which uh, uh, ownership is shared through stock. All right, we talked about monopolies. All right, we talked about cartels, John D. Rockefeller, horizontal integration, trust, Andrew Carnegie, vertical integration, social Darwinism, the ICC, the Interstate Commerce Commission, and the Sherman Antitrust Act. All right. I also taught you about Cornelius Vanderbilt, who had the railroad game on lock. J.P. Morgan, who had banking on lock. Okay. Again, Carnegie and Rockefeller are the two titans that most people talk about. Okay. You know, again, Rockefeller from the oil game, uh, Carnegie from the steel game. But do not sleep on Vanderbilt and Morgan. Them boy. We're getting some stupid money too. You can check out something about all these motherfuckers on a uh very well done thing put together by the I want to say the history channel called The Men Who Built America. Okay. Uh I know that title. That title is kind of slanted towards captains of industry, you know what I'm saying? But that's the title of it, and it is well done. All right. Um, we talked about the term tycoons. Um, swindle, innovations, capitalism. Oh, I don't think I broke this down. I broke it down last week, but I can't assume that you watched last week. Uh, capitalism, economic system in which the people uh, run the businesses. Okay. We live in a capitalistic society. All right. Uh, industrialists and regulation, rules put in place by the government on businesses. And of course, an industrialist is somebody like a Rockefeller, like a Carnegie, these big business leaders. All right. So those are the key terms from this section. What say you? Do you believe motherfuckers like uh, Rockefeller, Carnegie, Morgan, Vanderbilt were robber barons? You know, fucking over their workers, stealing from the poor, overcharging folks. Or do you think they were captains of industry and that this country wouldn't be what it is today without them? You got to make up your mind. You got to form your own opinion. But form that opinion based on facts. Form that opinion based on facts. That's what I'm going to give you here on Realist History. Put it on some.